Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Pinky. For those of you guys that are new, my name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, my lovelies, welcome back. I promised you guys I would do a video. I've been getting tons of questions on Instagram and TikTok and well, I figured might as well do the videos. Uh, this is a video I was working on for quite a while. I should have uploaded it a couple of days ago before it actually happened, the transit of Saturn in Pisces. We've been really busy. Um, that's what it is. I just have been very time restricted lately. Um, but anyways, here we are and we're going to get into the needy greedy. So welcome back. Get your cup, get your you know cup of coffee, your tea, whatever it is that you drink, your Red Bull or some uh, whiskey, whatever you're into. <laughs> Let's take a deep dive on what's going on. So I'm sure you guys have heard about the Saturn in Pisces. Yes, we just experienced this. Yesterday was the beginning, March 7th, 2023. And this transit is going to uh, last three years, all the way to 2026. Major, major changes here. Now, before we get into that, we also have the major transformative energy of Pluto. Pluto is also going to be one of the um, main, I guess, uh, daddy energy, right? <laughs> For 2023 regarding the energy shifts that are happening. So we have um, we have Pluto going into uh, we have Pluto going into completely blanked out. Saturn going into Pisces. Pluto is going into Aquarius. So like I said, major, major transformative energies here. Um, I'm drinking coffee right now, by the way. So if you guys hear me pause, et cetera, just know that I am currently running off of pure caffeine. We just experienced the full moon. We have tons of spells <laughs> that we've been doing for clients. And I literally have not slept all day. So uh, we're not complaining. We are beyond blessed. <laughs> but anyways, how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are doing marvelous with these amazing changes that are happening. Now, obviously change in human nature, you know, we go against that. That is against our nature. Change. Uh, we are creatures of habit. And when we have major planets changing, going into different signs, depending on the energy of that sign, depending on what that sign rules. Um, these are the themes that we can experience. So like I said, we have Saturn that just entered Pisces yesterday, and it's going to remain there till 2026. Um, what does that mean? So you guys can get an overall idea. We just pulled Saturn out of Aquarius. It had been in Aquarius for the past uh, three years. What does that mean? That means that the pandemic, right? Aquarius is humanitarian type of energy. It is the energy that rules over social movements, um, humanity, the best or for the best of humanity. So with Saturn, Saturn is a planet of restriction. It is a planet of thinking of the long haul. It is not a planet that is rushing with fiery energy. Let's get it done. And you know, no, Saturn is about, um, think of it as, think of it from all the nights of the tarot. It is the night of pentacles, right? Um, what does that mean? It's very slow in moving, very slow in moving. It, you know, it's very analytical. It makes movements and decisions based on wisdom, uh, Saturn rules time, it rules government, it rules, um, in essence, law, it rules everything that has to do uh, with discipline, with hard work, with determination. It is a planet that is what's considered malefic only because of the so much restriction that it comes with. Now, you know, a lot of people when they experience, like as an example, Saturn returns. For those of you guys that were born with Saturn in your Pisces, uh, this is your Saturn return. Um, very, very powerful energy. 
So like I said, let's take it a little bit back. Where was Saturn before it went into Pisces? It was in Aquarius. So we experience, uh, keep in mind, Saturn is a slow moving planet. So it goes into a sign, usually lasts there about three years. Um, so in that time frame, Saturn was in the sign of Aquarius, humanitarian type of sign. Uh, it is all about the collective. So what did we experience in that time? Well, we experienced Saturn going into it and what happened? The virus, right? The virus, um, the lockdowns, uh, the being restricted, the laws or the breaking of laws and the uprising, uh, major movement in regards to, uh, you know, anything that has to do with Again, the collective coming together, standing up for what is right. We've seen a lot of that in these past three years. So um, in essence, you know, it, it's also Aquarius is also futuristic. So it's about making those movements, those changes that need to happen. And also it rules over rebellion. So we've seen all of that happened um, and it, it continuously keeps happening, right? And of course, Saturn with its energy, it is about if, you know, are you a person of power? If you are, are you using that power uh, in a wise way or are you, <clears throat> are you taking advantage of that? And if you're taking advantage, then the mask will come off where Saturn is going to challenge you, right? It's going to challenge you in the aspect of were you in the right to, you know, take advantage of the power? Was it from, uh, collectively speaking, was it to benefit others or was it just for you? And if it's just for you, we also experience the, the wanting to overthrow governments, right? Politicians getting in trouble or getting caught in, in scandals and stuff like that. So that's Saturn energy. Saturn is the, the karma planet. You cannot play your toy with Saturn, <laughs> It's going to give you the good or the bad, whatever it is that you've basically, what you've reaped. That's exactly what it is that, you know, Saturn, which is why it's considered the karma planet. Um, but anyways, we, we experience all of that, right? And since that happened, since the restrictions, since the COVID that we all experience, and for all of you guys that lost people in that process, my condolences to you guys, um, me on a personal level, I was blessed, um, not to experience it at such close proximity. There was people that I didn't know about, um, in that process that, you know, were lost. Um, but anyways, it, it was a scary time in, in society. It was a scary time for humanity. And, you know, with this, now we're having Saturn go into Pisces. Now, Pisces is the sign of fantasy, right? It's the sign of, mm, some would say, illusions. It is the sign of compassion, of empathy. It is the sign of spirituality at its highest form, right? So Saturn going into it, what can we expect? Well, like I said, Saturn is the planet of discipline. It is the sign of, sorry, not the sign. It is a planet of hard work, determination, Pisces, the sign of dreams, fantasy. These two colliding, it is about bringing Piscean energy to be a little bit more grounded, to be a little bit more empowered in the emotions, the stability of emotion, the being able to draw from the astral world, right? The spiritual world to the third D, right? Saturn rules over material, material things, material possessions. So it is about fantasy, spirituality, emotions, um, dreams, hopes, and Saturn being about the material, being about the manifestation. So yes, this is powerful energy. This is, many would see it as 
literally there are no limits to the manifestations that you can do in this time, in these three years that we're going to be experiencing. But with Saturn, it is about focusing and putting all your energy and taking steps moving forward, not just staying in the fantasy land, not just staying in your mind, but taking the actual steps to make it happen. Now, depending on where this is going to be located in your chart, that's what you're going to be working on, or that's what you should be working on. And major changes, you guys, major changes is all I can say. You guys definitely stay tuned. Uh, I will be uploading another video for Pluto because that is another slow ass moving planet that is very transformational, especially because it's Pluto, right? Death, rebirth. So anyways, you guys stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, give us the algorithm, right? Help us with the algorithm. Um, so let's get into the needy greeting. Give me one second while I sip on my coffee and I'm going to try to pull up. Hopefully you guys can see the whiteboard here. Um, let's see why this is taking forever. So yeah, like I said, you guys can definitely expect a lot, a lot of, you know, a lot of powerful powerful changes happening in everyone's life um, because very transformative energy. So we're going to go down, <laughs> excuse me, we're going to go down all the rising signs, okay? Do not look at your sun. Um, if anything, I would encourage you to listen to your rising and your moon sign because this is where it's going to be you can expect these themes to come up for you uh, depending on where Saturn is being placed, okay? So let's get into it. We're going to begin here with Aries. So Aries, this is going to be happening in your, in your 12th house. How can I move this? You guys give me a second here. Not sure why it's not letting me. Okay, I'm just going to delete and we're going to create it really quick here. <clears throat> just for visual purposes, you guys. Okay, here we go. So Aries, this is happening in your 12th house, right? So in your 12th house, that is the natural home of Pisces. This is known as the representation of your enemies. So this is happening in your 12th uh, house with Saturn going into this 12th house. This will affect or having to deal with enemies. It represents people who are working at cross purposes with you. So for a lot of you, it can also represent the things that you do to undermine yourself. What does this mean? Well, Pisces is a house of isolation. It is a house of spirituality, of mystery, of, like I said, uh, for some hidden enemies. Why? Because the enemies that are known are usually seen in the sixth house. So across from the 12th house, your sixth house, right? They're hidden in the 12th house. So this can come or you can experience friends that you thought were friends that by the end of this transition, you will come to realize that they were either enemies or they were going against what you thought 
that they represented or what they thought the friendship between you two represented. This is also the house of undoing. What does that mean? With Saturn going into that, you're going to come to the realization of the blockages that you need to work through, right? The parts of you that need to be healed. Why? Because these are defensive mechanisms. These are actions that you take that undermine your purpose. So as an example, if you've been experienced nothing but toxic relationships, right? Then your natural definite, uh, your natural defense mechanism would be to push people or to test them, to play with their emotions. You don't see it as playing with their emotions. You see it as proof to me that you care for me and then I'll open up type of scenario. But in essence, it is playing with their emotions. So you're going to become aware of this with Saturn going into your 12th house. You're going to be aware of what it is that you do that affects you, not in a positive way, that keeps you from moving or being able to move forward. Um, this is coming, again, coming or becoming aware of our undoing, of what we do that self-sabotages ourselves. And you're going to get to the nitty gritty of why you do that. So there is a major awareness that's happening here within you. In this process, you may become more isolated. You may feel disconnected or not really wanting to connect with people on a deeper level only because you're trying to figure out the emotions and what's going on with you internally. This is all that, you know, the 12th house rules. So again, like I said, it can also represent dealing with people who are working at cross purposes with you. It could also represent the things that you do to undermine yourself. Isolation uh, may happen around this time. Opportunity here for growth and self-reflection. Also, very important areas in this process, in this transition that is happening for the next coming three years. It's going to be very, very important for you guys to be careful not to idolize a mentor, a guru, uh, someone that you highly respect or admire um, that has hidden motives. So I will give you guys an example, but with Saturn being here, it is like around this time, especially in your 12th house, Saturn will bring to you a mentor, someone that will seem like they're guiding you. And there's some type of idealization that is happening here. Um, the negative in that aspect is that sometimes they become aware or they see something in you that they themselves do not possess or they don't have or they lack of that that I, I you know idolizing them or respecting them starts to feel uncomfortable where you question you know do they care for me or are they trying to hold me back and again we talk about hidden enemies here so again with Saturn bringing the mentor, bringing the person that you admire, this could be at work too, you guys. This could be on every day. This is on the grander scale, but on the mundane everyday type of thing, it could be an employee, a coworker, your boss, even someone that you care for and you admire and you guys have been like cool for a while. And all of a sudden it seems like they're taking you under their wing. And then there is this awkwardness that you start to experience where they have you questioning or wondering, um, was that a backhanded compliment, a compliment where did I just catch them kind of like, you know, uh, looking at me in a weird way. This is not in your head, Aries. It's actually happening and it has a tendency of happening here in the 12th house. So that's why I'm saying be careful and mindful of that. Um, it's about listening to you, tuning into you. 12th house is all to do with that, internalizing. It is all about, you know, the conscious and subconscious, um, both, you know, being able to 
to be mindfully aware so that you can use that to the best of your benefit, to the best of your higher good or highest good. Um, so again, like I said, Saturn can bring or connect you with the mentor who will hinder or try to help or sabotage your growth. So that is what Saturn is bringing into you in the 12th house here. Now let's go with Taurus rising. Taurus rising. Saturn is going into your 11th house, which is the natural house of Aquarius. And you know, Saturn rules Aquarius. Um, so what does that mean? In your 11th house, this is the house of friends, groups, and allies. Over the next three years, you will experience some friendships coming to an end. Um, there could be a bit of challenges there. Um, it could be like your best is a friend, your best, best friend of all time. <laughs> um, there's a misunderstanding and then there is a distancing that progressively starts to happen until they finally either pull away or you no longer deal with them. Um, but this can impact you in your so social circle as well. Uh, you will, like I said, you will experience some friendships coming to an end, but also new connections and friendships beginning um, in this transit that the new ones that start to come in uh, start to stre uh, strengthen and become a support system. Uh, very strong support structures will be changing. Like I said, it could be your best friend. It could be that maybe your sister, uh, your brother, your cousin, uh, they're your major support system. And all of a sudden you start to see that they get into relationships and they start to pull away from you. Uh, and then, you know, you grow a bond or you get closer to someone and then all of a sudden you're dealing with them on everyday basis when in the past you used to deal on everyday basis with your sister or your brother, et cetera. Um, so again, there's major changes that are happening there and everything to do with support structures will be changing. You may find yourself in temporary isolation as you shift from one social circle to another. So in this um, there could be like, a, like I said, a friend or someone that starts to pull away. There is a bit of isolation there. Um, it could be because you just don't feel comfortable talking to other people about what's going on or whatever. Um, but at some point you come out of that isolation and you start a new chapter, quote unquote, on, uh, you know, your support system um, changing or relying on other people that have grown closer to you in this transit. Um, all right, now we're going with Gemini Risings. Gemini Rising, uh, Saturn is going to be going into your 10th house. 10th house is obviously ruled by Saturn. It is the sign of Capricorn. And what does this mean? This is 10th house is career. It is um, your reputation, your public persona. So Gemini Risings, you're going to experience Saturn in your 10th house, um, touching your career, public persona, and reputation. You could find that uh, something about your career or the way you represent yourself to the world is coming to an end and changing. Could be advancement or it could be a complete and total career change. So for a lot of you rising Geminis, you may start to experience that there are changes in the workplace. Um, it could be that, you know, maybe for some of you guys, you already experienced like doing things on the side <clears throat> while keeping your nine to five job. And in this transit that we just began, you're going to start to experience like more structure, more finances increasing, and it could be coming through those other jobs um, that were not necessarily something that you've been doing for a very long time. It could be something that you recently began to look into or start um, that is more beneficial for you. So then there's that complete shift of career path change uh, that is very highlighted for you guys for this transit. So uh, 
definitely it is uh, uh what is it uh, the glow up that's happening for gemini is when we're talking about career um your reputation can also change uh massively um and this obviously reputation when we connect that to career when we connect that to uh finances is a very great thing to have because obviously as your reputation grows uh, your status grows and your status, meaning your worthiness starts to go up in regards to what you do in that business career or field. Um, so amazing things happening there for Gemini's. Now let's go with Cancer rising. Cancer rising, you're going to be having Saturn um, in your ninth house. And so you're going to find Saturn in your ninth house. This house represents foreign travel, higher learning, law, religion. Saturn here may have you re-examining your worldview, whether it's in religion or social political belief system. It's also possible that you go back to school during this transition, um, during this period. You may also enjoy uh, some foreign travel or travel to learn uh, or to gain knowledge that feeds your spirituality. So as an example, um, I know someone that recently went through or is experiencing this transit um, in this exact house. And they have been, I want to say the past two months, um, have been traveling a lot. Um, obviously ninth house rules travel in foreign lands. Um, but it's not, you could experience travel for fun, um, spontaneity type of energy, but you know, this is the ninth house is known as the house of God spirituality. So for him to seek higher knowledge and to feed his spiritual side, he made those endeavors of going to foreign lands um, and has been traveling, like I said, the past two, three months. So again, this could be something that you start to experience more travel. For others of you, it could be that you're traveling because you're trying to gain some type of learning, some type of knowledge, some type of spiritual uh, con connectivity with the divine. Um, so it can be in either in either form. Um, but it is definitely to gain knowledge um, that feeds your spirituality. Uh, a lot of, you know, learning for some of you guys, like I said, some of you guys may be going back to school. Maybe you've been thinking about it in this transit. That's definitely going to happen for you. Um, all right, now let's go to Leo rising. So Leo rising, we are going to be, or you're going to be experiencing Saturn. By the way, you guys, this is supposed to be my Saturn, okay? It kind of looks like the sun. <laughs> okay, I was trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys to understand. <clears throat> and I know visual is something very important. People pick it up easier. Anyways, moving on. Leo rising, Saturn is going to be in your eighth house. Obviously, the eighth house is the natural house of Scorpio. Um, this house, uh, is representative of other people's resources and other people's esteem. Saturn here could represent changes in the finances. Now, because it's connected, the eighth house is always in connection to, as an example, those of you guys that are married or those of you guys that are in a committed relationship where you live with your partner, there may be major changes that happen here in regards to your partner's finances, not necessarily to you but to your partner. So as an example, this could be, um, if they're working, it could be that there is an unexpected layoff. It could be that they change a uh, career or that they change a job, uh, major changes that are happening here. Um, but again, like I said, it has more to do with other people around you than it has to personally do with you, Leo Risings. Um, like I said, uh, finances in regards to a partner, also eighth house, uh, this is the debt. Uh, this is the house of debts, of taxes. So there is, if you guys have been issues or have been having issues in regards to taxes or in regards to any type of debt um, in this transit or by the end of this transit, you're definitely going to be paying off those debts or you're going to be uh, taking care of that um, and no longer dealing with any type of issues with taxes or any type of 
debts or bills um, that have been going on for a while that have not been taken care of. You're definitely taking care of that by the end of this transit. Um, and also, uh, eighth house can also represent death and inheritance or inheritance that comes through the death of a close one or someone um, in your family or in your family dynamic. Um, so not necessarily, uh, you know, it's not a good thing. Um, the loss of a loved one is always very extremely painful, but it is known to happen when having Saturn in the eighth house, um, you know, Scorpio energy, death and transformation. Um, and because it is resources from others, uh, it is very known um, to bring in some type of inheritance, but it usually is at the difficult transition of losing someone. Um, so, all right, that got dark real quick. All right, moving on. Now we're going to Virgo Risings. So Virgo Risings, you are having Saturn going into your seventh house. Seventh house is the natural house of Libra, love, relationships, partnerships, um, commitments. And Saturn is entering the seventh house of marriage and partnerships. Oftentimes Saturn in the seventh house, it's going to make or break your relationships. Um, it brings an air of seriousness to this topic. So strong relationships can get stronger. Um, even relationships for some of you guys, if you're recently dealing with someone, it can take a tone of seriousness. Um, it becomes like, moves along rather quickly and it becomes like something serious. Um, for others of you, maybe even dealing with people that have been a bit elusive to the commitment or um, not necessarily knowing exactly where they stand. Um, Saturn going into your seventh house. Saturn is not playing, you guys. You guys, <laughs> Saturn is not playing. So Saturn is like, are you meeting all my needs and wants in this connection? If you are, then let's move it along and get to the nitty gritty. Let's get to that, you know, uh, monogamy or commitment or whatever it is you're into. As an example, you don't have to be into monogamy. For some of you guys, you know, you could be poly for all like, no, I don't know. But what I'm saying is there is a serious undertone with Saturn here that it is either it's working out or it's not working out. And if it's not working out, Saturn's like, all right, let's 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 get the ball rolling. Let's put them to the side or push them to the side, make room for what is going to be long lasting for you. So you're definitely going to be experiencing a lot of like uh, a bit of restrictions, a bit of challenges there for those of you guys that are currently in a committed relationship. Um, because it's like I said, it brings an air of seriousness to this topic. So Strong relationships uh, can get stronger while weaker relationships can fall apart and disintegrate before your eyes. Saturn will test the structure of the relationship to see if it holds the test of time rather rapidly, like I said, because Saturn is not playing around. So those of you guys that have been uh, single for quite a while, Virgo Risings, you can definitely expect uh, some type of commitment or some type of serious relationship uh, coming in through this transit for you guys. Um, like I said, if you're in a relationship and it's been challenging or hasn't been working out particularly well, it may disintegrate. Why? Because like I said, Saturn is coming in and saying, the way you give love is the way you should receive love. If it's not reciprocated and if there's no effort discipline and energy in it, then it's, it's served its purpose and it will push that out. So just be mindful of that. All right, now let's move on to Libra rising. Libra rising. Saturn is going to be in your sixth house. This is the natural ruling house of Virgo. Um, it could represent literal hard work, you guys. Um, but it is hard work in the pursuit of your goals. Sometimes it involves employees or people that work for you. 
um, that may be a bit challenging in that aspect. Um, sixth house is the everyday, the routine, um, you know, the, the grind basically, and, uh, maybe challenging in the aspect of, like I said, um, dealing with employees or people that work for you that may be challenging you or, <clears throat> you know, just, uh, having things going on in their life that it becomes a little bit, I wouldn't say difficult to deal with, but, um, it's just going to feel heaviness of energy. Um, so yeah, you can definitely expect that. Um, you can, it can also represent obstacles and potential physical health issues here. Why? Because the sixth house rules over that it rules over health, um, health and, um, with Saturn going into it, um, Saturn is restrictive. Saturn is like, if there are things health-wise that you haven't been taking care of, the moment it enters that house, which is the sixth house of Virgo, um, those issues will become more prominent. As an example, um, I know someone that um, experienced Saturn in their sixth house and uh, they were having issues or I, I don't know, something about like they had issues in the past um, with their teeth or something, but it, it wasn't as bad. So they kind of just, you know, ignored it or never took care of it. When Saturn, as soon as uh, Saturn entered their sixth house, um, it became, it became like very, like really bad, whereas they literally had to go and get the teeth removed or something like that. Um, but the reason for that is again, sixth house is health, um, or it represents health as well. And with Saturn going into it, it's like, like I said, Saturn's going to tell you, what is it that you have not been taking care of health wise, um, that we're going to have to do a refined tunement here, a tune up, uh, so that it doesn't get worse. So it doesn't progress into something that, you know, is, um, as bad. It's like, take care of it now so that you can later on move on from that and just not deal with it anymore. Um, so that's definitely some of you guys, like I said, could be potential obstacles in regards to your physical health issues. Um, uh, make sure you're structuring rest for yourself into your schedule. And it is crucial and important with Saturn sitting in your sixth house, Libra risings, um, to make sure that you are guarding that work-life balance. Um, Saturn in the sixth house can feel extremely busy, almost like not having enough time to catch your breath. Or it's like it, once you get out of work and you get home, it's like to cook dinner for the kids, for the husband or for the wife, whatever. It's like you're always on the go. It's go, 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 because six is a busy house. So with Saturn there, it's like you're going to need to up your discipline, but also it's going to be crucial and very important to maintain the balance in your life, in your work life and your personal life. So keep that in mind. All right, now let's go to Scorpio risings. Now you Scorpio risings, you're having Saturn going into your fifth house. Uh, fifth house impacts potentially children, has to do with children or possibly creative endeavors. You may find that you enjoy doing these things um, or you may find that you enjoy doing things alone or enjoy alone time. Um, or for some of you guys, you can find limitations and boundaries around children and entertainment. What do I mean by this? Well, Saturn, again, restrictions, right? Discipline. Fifth house is fun. The fifth house is creative. The fifth house is all to do with just amazing life, right? <laughs> Leo energy. Uh, with Saturn going into it, there's almost a feeling of, as an example, if you're to do with children, you may experience in this transit that you're dealing with a lot of kids. Even if you're like, as an example, even if you don't have kids, Saturn going into your fifth house, it's like taking responsibility for children or for children that are around you. So this could be nieces, this could be nephews. Um, and it could feel 
uh, like your life is kind of uh, connected or intertwined with, um, like I said, as an example, intertwined with your nephews and with your nieces. For others of you that do have children, it's like children, your children will become very prominent in this transit. It could be that they start to, um, I don't know, pick up on like uh, doing after school activities where you have to be more um, more around them or be more proactive in their everyday life routine. So it may feel like you're dealing with them, you know, a little bit more or more constantly, but there's also the feeling of like, I'm missing some me time, I'm missing some fun time or whatever you try to go out, something happens where there's a bit of an obstacle or a challenge there where you are being triggered to create boundaries so that you can give time to yourself, if that makes sense. Um, so like I said, those of you guys that uh, you may start to experience Leo, um, sorry, not Leo, Scorpio, um, Scorpio risings, you may feel like uh, you are, you know, I deserve some me time or I had a long week. Um, I'm going to leave, you know, the kids to, <clears throat> I'm going to leave the kids to uh, my husband or my sister to take care of them, watch them have a night out. And then something happens where it doesn't work out that easily. Uh, so you are constantly being reminded of the need to create boundaries and the need to balance your life as well as giving yourself time, like giving yourself me time. Um, and in this process of creating those boundaries, you may find yourself um, really missing or desiring or wanting to have fun. Uh, so there is a, a come and go type of energy of like wanting to you know, just pick up your feet and, and enjoy yourself, but also responsibilities are too much that you don't really have the time to do so, so often. I hope that makes sense. All righty. Now moving on to Sagittarius rising. So for those of you guys that are Sagittarius rising, Saturn is going into your fourth house. So um, you're going to experience this in your fourth house, Sagittarius home and family. I can see Sagittarius selling their homes or moving to a new home or a new location. Uh, there may be changes around the family. However, with Saturn being here, it can also represent um, potential deaths of elders in the family. Uh, might see restrictions or delays for some of you um, around home, around the home. So for those of you guys that, as an example, are you know, wanting to remodel or have been remodeling, you may start to experience a stop and go type of energy where you have to stop and then you pick up again. Um, this is just kind of like the challenge that arises from that um, or around uh, landscaping or fixing or upkeep, uh, upkeeping um, the, stop, the start and stop type of energy. But uh, overall, um, not necessarily a negative thing other than, like I said, keep in mind, Saturn in fourth house can uh, indicate um, or foresee some type of loss in regards to the physical death of uh, elders or, you know, the elders in the family. So, all right, moving along here, we are now in Capricorn Rising. So Capricorn rising for Cap, Saturn is in your third house of communication and community. Um, with a fallen Mercury co-present, I would be careful about communication at this time. Um, although long-term, I think there is some potential for some very wise communication or some contribu uh, contribution to community on a serious level, possible conflict. Um but on the whole, I think it looks good. Um, so what I mean by that is the first, like we just went, Saturn just went into your third house. So I would say around this time frame, be more wise and careful about how you communicate what you post on social media, um, how you react to certain people or how you pretty much express yourself. 
Um, Saturn could be harshness and uh, with the, like I mentioned, with the fallen Mercury co-present right now, um, you could come off rather strongly or people could just take it very wrong. Um, it's kind of like the energy of when influencers post something that is very disrespectful or um, very non empathetic and then they take they receive extreme backlash. That's the type of energy. So for the first few months, uh, be very cautious about how you ex <clears throat> how you express yourself, uh, Capricorn. But after that, uh, you should be good to go. Also, third house is also social media, internet communication. If you're using um, Saturn's energy, anything to do with teaching, speaking, or wisdom, how to do this, how to do that, or tips and tricks, this is uh, going to be potentially very great for you to draw in and connect with the masses. So, um, all right, moving along. Now we have, uh, so Aquarius, Aquarius risings, um, your Saturn is going to be in your second house of personal and finances and personal resources. This could indicate a period of delay or scarcity. Um, be cautious, don't be spending unnecessarily, don't be uh, taking major expenses that are unnecessary right now. Uh, second house is always to do with your personal finances and how you make finances. But with Saturn here, again, Saturn restricts. So going into it, it's going to restrict your finances or cause a bit of delay. So you don't want to be taking unnecessary risk right now. Um, so yeah, but for those of you guys that have been saving and working on your finances, you can also find that you reap the long-term benefits of your efforts. Saturn tends to bring the fruit of your actions, good or bad, okay? All right, my lovelies. And finally, we are now here with Pisces rising. So for those of you guys, Pisces rising, you're having the Saturn in your first house. This is the house that represents you, your physical body, and your mind, as well as your personality. Be mindful, you guys, potential for illness and difficulty does exist in this placement uh, with Saturn going into your first house. You know, keep in mind, first house is your physical body. So um, you may be restricted or challenged in that aspect. However, you'll be able to overcome that. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see what else. This is also... Um, for this is good as well for investments in self care. So I would highly encourage you guys, like I said, the first uh, year, or second year in this transit, make sure that you're also taking care of your mind and spirit. Meditation, being Zen, and releasing or finding new ways of releasing your stress and anxiousness, Pisces. Why? Because again, with the restriction of Saturn, you don't want to be pushed to the point of being challenged in taking care of your physical health because there's been a major decline in your health um, or life force in your physical body um, because of stress or anxiousness or um, uh, imbalances in the body. And for some of you guys, especially those of you guys that have a weak immune system or anything that has to do with that, anything that has to do with your hormones, anything that has to do with um, even um, low, what is it, uh, low in iron or whatnot, important, important to make sure to take care of yourself in this transit. All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will be uploading another video for you guys for Pluto. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoyed these videos. I hope they help you guys like, share, and comment, and keep an eye out for Pluto's transit. I will be doing an, a video on that and how it's going to affect your sign. So till then, I wish you guys the very best, and we'll see each other soon. Till then, bye-bye.